Hello guys and gals and welcome uh, to another episode of Skills and Abilities. Today we're going to, be going to be going over one that has changed significantly in the past couple of patches, and that is Blade Sentinel. Blade Sentinel has probably changed the most out of just about any ability within the game, and um, it went from probably one of the worst abilities in the game to now it's kind of broken. It's kind of broken now. And uh, you might be asking, well, what has changed about this ability, and why is it so powerful now? Well, there's a couple things. First off, when they made the next hit delay changes, the Blade Sentinel was affected by this pretty ridiculously. Um, Blade Sentinel is an ability that you cast, and uh, I seem to have a delay in my audio here. Oh, let me let me refresh my audio connection. Boop. So basically how it works is Blade Sentinel can only hit a target once every second. Once per second. That's basically what it says. It's a 25 frame delay. Which means that if you fire a, a Blade Sentinel, it can only hit one target every 25 seconds. Or 25, sorry, 25 frames, which is one second. And uh, this really kind of limited its damage output. Um, on top of this... Um, it never had any synergies, and it basically did, like, no damage. It was based off of your weapon, which is, you know, yeah, okay. Uh, and it did, like, halfway decent damage when it, it would hit a target, but since it could only hit them, like, once every second, um, it was an issue. Now, you can also cast multiple of these, um, but the thing was, is in the past, when you cast multiple of these, and you had multiple of these running, um, they could only, again, still only hit the target once every second. And that was all of them. All of them could only hit a target once every second, which meant that your spinning blades of doom were not quite as doomy as they should have been. Now, thanks to the change that they made in next hit delay, each blade has its own next hit delay, uh, which means that each blade can now hit a target once every second. So you can hit basically one monster five times per second if you cast all five of the blades. If you cast a, a sixth blade while you currently have one in the, uh, you know, like in, in activity, it will basically just delete the blade that was first cast. So when you cast one, two, three, four, and then five, this one, which is the sixth, will immediately get destroyed. Uh, the first one gets destroyed and the sixth one is cast. Now, you can only have this many up. It's not really that big of a deal how many you have up. It is by attack speed, though. So the faster you attack, for instance, if I switch over to the Flesh River, um, I can cast them a little bit faster. Um, if I use something like Burst of Speed, Burst of Speed will let me cast them even faster. As you can see, now I can cast them even quicker. Um, this one is actually judged by your attack speed. Now, personally, I don't really think it's all that important to have really fast attack speed when it comes to these, although it does let you deploy them quickly and then move on, which is something that you kind of want. Now, what was the other thing that changed that made these things even more powerful? Well, they used to have pretty pathetic damage. Uh, the damage was bumped up quite significantly, and the synergies were added, and uh, this has made them kind of insane. Now, you might be asking, well, like, how insane are we talking? Well, see that 495 to 515 damage that's added to the, uh, the ability? That's minimum and maximum. Okay? That's not, like, just 415 and 95 damage added. That's minimum and maximum number. So, like, if I take off all of my equipment and I actually just look at the number, like, that it's giving me, which is kind of hard to do, of course, because I have a lot of max damage charms and things. I mean, what you'll see is that the number literally is just represented exactly on the screen. And I can just go ahead and take everything off. Why not? We'll just take... We'll just remove it all. You see it says 496 to 518. 495 to 515. We are literally exactly that much damage. Um, and then, of course, you add the weapon, and that beefs it up even more. And then you add in all your charms and all your other items into the game, and that makes it even higher. Um, and basically, the entire you know premise of this is that, well, you are getting um, a massive amount of damage now from this ability. So not only does it hit more often, five times more often, it also got a huge damage bump in the process. And so now it actually hits really freaking hard, and it does lots of damage. Um, if you take it into a group of monsters um, and you fire it off, 
what you're going to notice is it actually does really freaking good damage and kills lots of monsters relatively quickly. Um, let me see if I can find a good pack of monsters here. Something that, uh, something a little meaty. We need some, we need meaty boys. Meaty boys. Of course, we could also just kill this thing real quick. Um, as you can see here, it actually hits pretty darn hard, kills monsters relatively quickly. Just annihilated that, uh, that thing. Um, and when you're utilizing it, you can really kind of control where it goes, too, like the pathway. So if you click close to yourself, it only goes in a very small little area. If you click far away, it's going to take a much longer path, and it's going to go between those two points. And it continually just goes between those two two points for the entire duration, which um, is 15 seconds now that it's uh, it was maxed out. Um, the damage that it does is pretty decent. Let's let's talk about that for a second, by the way. Let's go over um, all the things it can do and it can't do. Um, we'll get an idea. So if we go over to Amazon Basin here, Amazon Basin has mostly still correct information, although some of the stuff has been changed. Um, like, for instance, um, it no longer is a three-eighths uh, attack. It's only three-fourths and so forth and so on. However, um, it is still... Um, being uh, penalized for two-handed. So two-handed is no longer three-sixteenths, it's three-eighths, and the three-eighths was bumped up to three-quarter. Uh, what does that actually mean? Well, it used to remove, like, a massive amount of damage from your character. I think it was, like, it's almost like a 75% reduction. Now it's only 25% reduction, um, which is three-fourths. However, when you're using a two-hander, it's now three-eighths which is a huge penalty and basically makes two-handers just completely useless for Blade Sentinel. Uh, because not only does it completely negate the damage bonus that you would get from a two-hander, but it also you're also you know losing that bonus and then you're not even getting a shield bonus in the process. So you're losing you're losing the two-handed bonus and you're losing the shield bonus and you're getting nothing for any of it. Um, elemental damage does work, including poison, including um, Venom, even if it says it isn't. Uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't report properly on the character panel. Uh, when using two claws, it's always going to use your primary claw, not both claws. And that's important. Uh, min damage works, max damage works, plus percent damage works, critical strike, deadly strike, uh, those work as well. Uh, magic damage, fire damage, lightning, cold, and poison damage all work, as well as cold and poison length. Um, however, it's important to note that these are penalized, so any elemental damage or any physical damage that you add outside of the actual damage that's on the ability, um, like, for instance, um, the 495 to 515, anything besides that is penalized by that 25% reduction, so 75% weapon damage. So even magic, fire, lightning, cold, poison, um, and po cold length as well, um, and poison length, all of it, it's all penalized. Um, attack rating works, attack plus percentage rating works, negative monster defense works, um, extra gold for monster works, a better chance of magic item works, and skill bonus uh, works, of course. Um, what is not listed here is negative targets of defense percentage, although per hit works. I don't see the percentage listed here. Hmm. Hmm. Um, also, the character panel has never really um, reported the damage properly. So the damage that's added from the ability, the, the 495 to 515 min and max, is actually applied before your percentage damage, like Fortitude, Phoenix, etc. Even though it doesn't actually report it properly on the character panel. Uh, that's just It's just something that kind of happens behind the scenes. Uh, do, 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 do. Honestly, the way that they changed Blade Sentinel makes it pretty ridiculous. It uh, it has gotten not only the penalty reduced, the all the actual damage that it applies increased. The number of hits have been increased by five times. I think that if any of you actually take a Blade Sentinel like character out and you actually play with them. Um, you'll see exactly what I mean, which is that like it's just insane with the amount of damage that it puts out. Um, just as an example, I mean, let's go, let's go over here. Of course, we got Ghosty Boys, and Ghosty Boys are immune to physical damage. No, Ghosty Boys. Ghosty Boys gonna make some noise. 
course, I probably could have picked somewhere better besides Ghosty Boys. Let's go over here and let's see what we got. We got beetles. I'm going to go ahead and set up a crisscross pattern here. Um, and as you can see, it just absolutely annihilates. I mean, here's an immune to physical beetle, uh, which is an issue with this particular, you know, ability set, is it's very much so physical damage. Uh, but let me go back to town. Let me grab my physical sunder. Bone break. And we'll see what we can do versus him with the physical sunder. Of course, we can also tap on our venom. And I'm just going to set up a nice line here. We're going to let him just walk into it. Um, as you can see here, even with the massive amount of damage, as just having just having the bone break in your inventory can actually allow you to still kill stuff. Because the damage that you output is pretty ridiculous. The crushing blow, all of it. I mean, it... Uh, it, it, it doesn't really seem like a lot. But when you get out there and you actually fight stuff, I, the way that they increase Blade Sentinel is insane. If you really want to get a good idea of how effective Blade Sentinel is, I have a playthrough that I recently did. Um, Players 8, solo self-found assassin, ran through the entire time with Blade Sentinel, and Blade Sentinel just was on point the entire time, just demolishing everything. Just absolutely amazing to have on my side. Beat the game with Clegolod's set, Blade Sentinel, Blade Fury, and Blade Shield. Super easy, honestly. Um, ran into some issues with some immune to physical monsters, obviously, because um, I didn't have access to a bone break. But... Um, it's such a good accompaniment to Blade Fury. Um, it also doesn't use durability. So uh, just to show you here, let me throw on an item that has... Uh, it's ethereal, and it has no Zod rune in it. And uh, let's just go down to... Um, get a frigid Highlands. And let's go kill uh, Eldritch. So let me go ahead and grab Blade Sentinel here. We're going to... Fire off a couple of blade sentinels. Let's go down here, down this, because that's not enough. Does so that really prove the point? Let's go down here and kill Shanky Poo. Oh no, we already killed Shanky Poo. Well, let's kill a couple more monsters. And what you'll see is that the durability just doesn't go down. Uh, no matter how many monsters you kill with blade sentinel, uh, there's no decrease. Which makes it uh, very easy to find nice ethereal weapons um, to use with this. Now, the one ability that does burn durability is Blade Shield. Blade Shield will burn durability of items. Um, and uh, if I cast Blade Shield and then I run into a pack of monsters, um, you will actually see the durability of the item go down. Blade Shield, I don't know exactly why Blade Shield does remove durability and why the other ones don't when they're all part of the same tree. Uh, but if you are going to utilize an ethereal item and you don't want that item to break, um, you do have to avoid using Blade Shield for that reason. Um, it's not going to be, like, super ridiculous. It's not going to pull off, like, massive amounts of durability. It really depends on how much you, you know, are utilizing it, how many monsters are currently standing around you, and so forth and so on. But eventually it will start to remove durability from the item. It's only a matter of time. And um, it doesn't really even hit all that frequently. But, yep, there you go. There's our first durability point lost. Boo-hoo. We lost one durability on our Flesh Ripper. No. All from Blade Shield. Do -do 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 -do. No, my bow. Let's try that. Now, um, one of the things that has changed significantly, just like with Blade Fury, and I do need to talk about this, is that uh, the amount of damage that you can add with plus to skills has gone up tremendously with uh, Blade Fury and Blade Sentinel and Blade Shield. Um, and if you take off any plus to skills that you have, uh, for instance, let me go ahead and throw Blade Sentinel back up here, um, you notice that it's a 495 to 515. 
if I take off my torch, um, that goes to 420 to 440. So we lose, uh, what is that, uh, 515 to 440, which is boop, minus 440. So we're getting about 75, and then we can divide that by 3, so about 25 damage per point. Now, why is this so significant? Why is it so important? Well, we're getting about 25 min and max damage per skill point. Um, and notice that I have 10 max damage charms here. Well, these 10 max damage charms are not giving me anywhere near what a skill point can. So in the past, we used to stack plus max damage because that was really the only way that you can get a large amount of bonus. However, now that the plus the skills and the synergies exist, um, you know, together, and now we have a massive bonus on how much we're getting per point. The trap skillers are actually superior to max damage charms um, in pretty much every way now, uh, because not only are they literally like 2.5 times the amount of damage that you would get, but also it's important to note that when it comes to Blade Fury, Blade Sentinel, and Blade Shield, they have penalties. And the penalties do not apply to the damage that comes from the skill, but they do apply to the max damage that comes from the charm. So not only are you not getting the 10 max damage, you're getting like 7.5, but the plus to skills are giving you more now than they did before. So adding in plus to skills um, is a huge boon to the damage of these abilities, and that's why items like this are absolutely ridiculous. Uh, because this is like a, an ethereal weapon that has, like, say, plus three blade fury or plus three blade sentinel or plus three blade shield. That plus three is going to be a massive bonus to the min and max damage of the ability. And it is huge now. It's absolutely huge. Um, it's kind of hard to pass that up, especially if you consider it um, in a more um, interesting way, which is if, if I'm getting 25 per skill point, 25 min and 25 max, and I can add 10 skill points, um, you know, times 25, that's 250 min, 250 max. It's, it's a lot. And if I can add 20, that's 500 min, 500 max. That's more than what grief is adding. That's more than grief. Um, grief is only 400, even if you get a perfect roll. Um, and it's not particularly that difficult to get plus the skills on an assassin. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your Blade Fury, Blade Sentinel, etc. Uh, because it does actually get a huge amount of damage now from plus the skills. A lot more than it ever did in the past. I think that's pretty much it for this skill. Um, the next skill we're going to be going over is Blade Shield. Uh, we'll be talking about that one next. Uh, as always, I'd appreciate you guys and gals checking out my videos. Even when we're just talking about Blade Sentinel. Um, and as always, keep watching.